Welcome back to Centennial Reflection as we share the history of Arkansas State University today with Evan Lindquist. Um, one of the presidents that, that you worked under was uh, Ray Thornton, and uh, Mr. Thornton was a politician rather than coming out of the academic community when he was uh, appointed president of Arkansas State University. And he felt like there was a need to kind of kind of be able to have a, to have a group to, to kind of test the waters for some of his ideas. And he formed a group called the President's Fellows. And you were uh, one of that first class, uh, and I think you were chair of-, uh, of I was, yes. What, what, what did he want y'all to do? What was the charge? Well, <clears throat> I asked him, what, what are we supposed to do? You see, this was thrown at me in the middle of an honors convocation. I knew nothing about what was going to happen. And all I knew was that he said there's going to be an honor, or, uh, uh, President's Fellows. And the chairman is going to be Evan Lindquist. He made that announcement in public. That's <laughs> right. I had no chance to say no way. <laughs> so when the thing was all over, he named five people. And <clears throat> when it was over, I went up to him and, and I said, uh, what am I supposed to do? He said, you do whatever you want to do. Blank and, check, huh? <laughs> yeah. And he said, uh, I'm one of the fellows. I said, well, are you telling us what to do? And he said, no, no, you tell me what to do. I work for you now. But this was a concept I had never, ever considered. But um, I've found out since that there are some other universities that have this kind of thing. And I think it was a very good move for him to do it because, as you said, he came out of politics. He came out of Washington. He was in, in a lot of a different hat, wore a lot of different hats, but he was very influential in science, in ethics, and, and government. And so, On his committee appointments in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he had <clears throat> uh, a, a, a knowledge that was very far ranging about everything, but he hadn't been actually affiliated very much with academe. And so he didn't want to get some ideas that might be anathema, that might not go over well. And so he wanted this group to be a sounding board. And he wanted to hear our ideas. And so we had many meetings in which we would simply throw out ideas, we would discuss these things. And if he had ideas, he would call us in as individuals at any time during the week and just run through things. He said uh, over the years that this group of people uh, saved him a lot of headaches, <laughs> caused him to think twice about doing some of the things that he had planned to do. Well, one of the positive things that, that came out of this first group was a kind of a revised honors program. It was a full-fledged honors program and the, we, in the first semester, we decided what we were going to do. There were six of us, counting Ray. We wanted to team teach two classes. So uh, <clears throat> we divided ourselves up. We put two classes on the curriculum for one-time uh, offerings. And Ed Bennett and Ray Thornton and I taught the first class. What was the name of it? The that name class? of it was The Dream of Reason Breeds Monsters, or Does It? <laughs> and the concept behind it was that each of us would pick one person in history who was um, a catalyst for the future. So I picked an artist and. Oh, the Teachers were expected to pick someone as well as the students. Well, the students did later, but okay. we, the teachers, started out okay. with, with our own choices. So mm -hmm. I picked Goya because he was, in, to my way of thinking, where everything in modern art actually begins. Mm -hmm. Ray Thornton picked uh, T.S. Eliot in literature, and uh, Ed Bennett picked uh, 
James Clerk Maxwell, the physicist. And we just had a really good time comparing and analyzing history, putting these three together and seeing how they changed life as, as the future went on. Well, then later in the semester, the students had to take over. Mm -hmm. And they selected their people. Don't ask me who they were now. because I don't <laughs> So y'all were kind of the model for them. Yes. Here's, here's a way to do this. That's right. Uh, how did you recruit students uh, well, for those classes? Well, that was really difficult because <clears throat> here you have an honors course. Everybody is looking at it and they're thinking, well, that's going to be a lot of work, isn't it? They, they didn't know any track record for this mm -hmm. honors program or this course and the president of the university is teaching it. and So we didn't have many comers to it. So a couple of us just started going down the halls identifying students who were you really... And you and you, right? <laughs> we knew the ones who were, were really good students and we got those people to come in. It was hard to convince some that they should take a chance with their grade point averages. But they, I think they all benefited from this. Evan, thank you very much for sharing uh, that information with us and sharing those memories with us. Well, thanks, well. Rich. It's been a pleasure. This has been Centennial Reflection, a uh, look at the history of Arkansas State University from its days as an agricultural school back in 1909 all the way up to its present day status as a multi-purpose university. For the Centennial Reflections program, I'm Rich Carville.